please turn to the page in your packet. The title is Constructing Graphs and Data Tables. This is a little mini lecture about the correct way to construct a graph and data tables. We will start with data tables. Why do you need to create data tables? In science, we always need to neatly and logically organize data from an experiment. We always collect data, and the way to collect data, you insert it into data tables. So to make data collections easier during an experiment, and so that's why you always start with data tables first, and then you are able to insert your data once you've had your data table. And of course, because your biology teacher, myself, and all the other biology teachers require you to do so. And they're awesome. How to construct the perfect data table. First, make sure you know your experiment. Read the experiment and identify the independent and dependent variables. You can underline what you think the independent is and circle what your dependent is, but you always need to know what your independent and de dependent variables are first. Organize the data tables as a series of columns. Those are the vertical things, up, down. Always label the top of each column with the heading, the variable, and the units. Do not forget units. You will get points taken off. Always write a correct title across the top of the table. And just a hint, data table is not. It will never be a correct title if you just write data table. This isn't on your sheet, but it explains, if you look at the um, example data table, this explains what goes on each part of your data table. Your very first column, the leftmost column of the data table, is the independent. You shouldn't just write independent, you should actually put what the independent is. So if time is your independent variable, you'd put time there with seconds. And I'll give you an example in a second. Units are always in parentheses. Your second column is labeled trials, one, two, three. You might have 10 trials, 20 trials, um, but you always label it one, two, three, and so on. Your third column, and fourth, fifth, sixth, depending how many groups you have, are labeled with your dependent variable. So that could be um, with water, without water, with juice, with um, alcohol or um, isopropyl alcohol, or um, honey, or something like that, and make sure you have units if units apply. And then when you're doing multiple trials, you have to have averages. If you're not doing trials, you might not need an average, but always when you have multiple trials, you need to calculate your average. So you will have um, an average column as well. So now on to what example. So you have this table in the middle of your page, and you have three boxes. And if you want to write inside the three boxes for trials, you must have at least three. Any good experiment has at least three trials. Your dependent variable, what a dependent variable is, and this should be review, it's the thing that you are measuring in the lab. Your average, here's where you calculate the average for all of the trials within a certain group. You cannot average every single trial between all groups and just have one average. You need to have an average for each experimental group. Now, in the bottom, you have a whole um, blank row, um, and that is for you to kind of understand what your this uh, example is. So you could put that the temperature of water would be your um, your independent variable and we're doing degrees Celsius, you should never really do degrees uh, Fahrenheit in science. We always use metric. And then trials, again, is always one, two, three. The uh, dependent is the amount of algae, and so we're weighing, massing it in grams. And then if we're doing three trials um, and two different uh, groups, you're gonna have two different average amount of algae. You're gonna have an average for your, um, you're gonna have one average for your 10 degrees Celsius, and you're gonna have a second average for your 25 degrees Celsius of how much algae you have. And so now how do you construct a graph? And so how we construct a graph, or why we construct a graph. 
to create a visual, a picture of the data so that you can um, analyze that data, compare the data as more of a visual. So to create a picture of the data gathered during a scientific experiment. You're comparing the two data, three data, however many data sets of the control group and the experimental group. And you're really looking for trends. You determine trends of data. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it staying constant? In order to generate conclusions based on that experimental data. And of course, because we love graphs, um, and we're making you do them. And it's a good skill to have. So how do you go about making them? First, you need to make sure that you know what variables go on what axis. So independent, dependent. Do you kind of remember? Let's see if you do remember. The independent variable goes on the x-axis. And don't forget, you'll label it. For example, it was the temperature of water, but don't forget the units, the uh, degrees Celsius in parentheses. And so therefore, the dependent variable is on the y-axis. Also include your units. And then, as I said uh, just now, make sure each variable has its own units. There might be some times where it does not have a unit. Um, make sure you double check, because if you don't have a parentheses there, that should make you think, huh, something is wrong. Double check with your partner to see if you have a unit, and you're still, if you're still unsure, come talk to your teacher. So now let's go through a whole practice set together of how to construct a, um, an actual graph. First of all, your graph should always be very, 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 very important. Your graph should be as large as possible. We will take points off if you're using even just 25% of your graph. You should be using more than 50% of your graph um, in order to set up your graph. So step one is to find the largest number in each data set. Take a look at your um, table here, time and the number of mice caught per night. The largest number is very important because it is the maximum value you need on your, um, your graph on the, each axis. So that's the number that you want to. Right now I would like you to circle for time and number of mice caught per night. Circle the highest numbers and make sure it's not always the last um, number in the row. So take a second right now and uh, circle it. And let's see if you match mine. So 210 days for time and 45, day, uh, 45 mice were caught um, the, at the highest uh, night. And so now you see you have a graph to the left of your data table. So now let's see if we can figure out how to scale this. Count the number of boxes along each axis. So do that right now. So count how many boxes you have. So you should have had eight boxes on each um, X and Y axis. And you notice time should be your independent variable and number of mice caught, that's what you're, the data that you're collecting, should be your dependent variable. So time will go on your X axis and you see it I have in parentheses days. And mice caught per night with a number sign in parentheses should be your dependent on your Y axis. Remember your largest number from step one, time, remember that was 210 days. That should be your last number, or at least close. It should be even maybe a little bit higher, because if it doesn't divide out perfectly, it might be a little bit higher. So 210, 212, 215, 218, something like that. Close to 210, though. Looking at the x-axis, uh, the value between each box must be exactly the same. We call it equal increments. They have to be the same. Also, this will be points taken off if you do not have equal increments. And you end at around 10 or a little bit over, two, sorry, 210 or a little bit over 210. So I'm just going to try out to go by twos and see if I'm going to, if it can, if it's going to work with going by twos. 0, 2, 4, hmm, this won't work. It doesn't get me to 210. So how do I go about figuring out what my equal increments would be for each of the spacing? 
So guessing might not be the best option. There is a mathematical way of doing this. Divide the largest number in the data by the number of boxes. So if you recall for time, 210 was the largest number, and we had eight boxes. And you might need to round up if it's not an even number. So 210 divided by 8 is 26.25. But you can't go up by 26.25. You have to go up by whole numbers. And so you round up uh, to 27. So each spacing, each increment, will be in uh, equal increments of 27. So you can do either 27 plus 27 plus 27, or you start with the lowest number in your data set, which was 0 for... Um, time, and then multiply the, the line number, so the first number would be 0, the second um, number, that's your first line over, that would be 27 times 1, and then 27 times 2, 27 times 3, 27 times 4, either that way or count 27 plus 27 plus 27, whichever way works better for you. And you can see it goes 0, 27, 54, 81, 108, 135, 162, 189, 216. Now that's not exactly 210, it's a little over and that's perfect. You have to make sure that that last number is not less than your highest number in your data set. Now you repeat for the y-axis. Repeat the steps 3 and 4, calculate the space size, there are 8 spaces. Now you need to subtract the smallest data set from the largest data set, which is 37, divide by the number of boxes, which is uh, 8 boxes, so that gets you 4.625. You can't go up by that, that would be way too complicated, so you need to round up, which would be 5. You will start your origin with your smallest data set. Your smallest data point is 8. So from there, you go 8, 13, 18, 23, 28, 33, 38, 43, 48. And remember, the highest number the, uh, at the top of your y-axis should be either the exact same as your largest data set or a little bit higher, which this is fine. And now we'll include the x-axis. And now we're going to need to plot the data sets. I'm going to pause, give you some time, and plot your data sets. So you need to make sure that you go back, look at your data table, and start plotting them. If you need more time, please pause this recording. This is what it should look like. Do you see the red dots? Those should be your plots of all of your data points. There we go. So next, how to make the perfect graph. Continuing on, plot um, the data or data sets. Um, oh, I think we did this already, so wait one second. We do, didn't do this. Turn the play, page and now plot the data sets. That's uh, step three. Um, set or sets. You might have multiple um, experimental groups and you'll have to plot each one and so what you need to do is use a shape around each data point and for each different experimental group you're going to need to do a different um, shape. So triangle, circle, square and um, each teacher has this a little different so make sure you talk to your teacher first. 
use different shapes for each data set plotted on the graph. And because you're using more than one line then, if you're doing every shape has another line. So if you use a triangle, a square, and a circle, you're going to have three lines. And you need to show your audience what each of those lines mean. And so you need to make a key to identify each data set plotted on the graph. So in this example, and yours is a little bit, um, because it's black and white, it's a little bit harder to see. But the top green line, that's the darker shaded with triangles, you see that that's the light moth population. And the, the bottom one, which is the yellow, so it's very, very faint with squares around it, and you can see in the um, legend or the key that that's the dark moth population. And you can see that there is um, time on the bottom, percent moth population on as your dependent variable on the y-axis. Let's try and move on. Continuing on, now what type of graph do you use? If you're using a line graph, do you connect the dots or do you use a line of best fit? Do you use a straight line or do you use a curved line? And then are you even using a line graph or a bar graph? All of these answers and more you will find in Appendix A. So make sure you go into your book and look at Appendix A. The, each page in there talks about a different, if you're using a line graph, if you should it be a best fit line graph or just connect the dot line graph, if it should be a bar graph or a line graph. The one thing I will tell you is that a line graph you use for continuous when they are continuous and your data points are continuous. So like temperature would be a good example of a line graph going from zero to you know 100 degrees Celsius. A bar graph is when you have completely different data sets. If I were to survey my class and ask who likes cheese pizza, pepperoni pizza, or sausage pizza, those are two completely different data sets. It's not continuous and that would be more of a bar graph or it would be a bar graph. And make sure when you are connecting any lines, you always use a ruler. Don't eye it. Always use a ruler to make it um, nice and clean. So here's a connect the dot one, and here's a line of best fit. And you can see the line of best fit. Um, some are above, some are below, and it allows you to show the trend as a straight line. But make sure you go back and read Appendix A in your book, because it does explain in detail how to decide which one to use. And finally, if I can get there, you must title your graph. And again, graph is not a good title. You have to have a correct title. You use both variables in your title and you are very specific. You want to write neatly at the top of the graph, not on the grid. And you want to use the proper format, effect of independent variable on dependent variable, or you can say effect of x-axis on y-axis. If you go back a couple pages to our practice one, it had the temperature and the amount of algae. So it would be the effect of temperature on the amount of algae present, or something like that, is what you would use for that example data table that we had. And now it's your turn to practice. The next few pages, two pages, is practice, and that is your homework. You need to finish the next two pages because tomorrow we will come in. I don't know if your teacher is going to check it or not. You'll have to um, wait and see. But um, you have to have these done so you know how to graph and create a good data table and a good graph. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your teacher, email them, or come in for help early. I hope you enjoyed.